Right, good evening everybody and welcome to Ooh, I got Welcome to episode 97 of my Jump Game Review series. I'm your host Chris Gogol and thank you for joining us on this fine Monday. And it looks like our new league event is going to be this alternate format, Watto's Objective format. I'm not too familiar with this format, so we're going to check a little more into that. Alternate formats are always a fun thing, right? Mix things up a little bit, get tired, get out of the rut of playing the same decks against each other. Uh, so we're going to take a look into that format in just a minute. We'll take a quick look at the old Jump Lobby. It looks like we got uh, just a few casual games going on right now. Uh, somebody's got an OCS table up. We'll see if that game gets accepted. I'm tempted to take that myself. Uh, but while we have an opportunity here, uh, we'll remind you about a few things. We've talked about it for a few weeks now. The Premier to Death Star 2 Retro event. Uh, Sign-ups, only about another week or so to sign up. There's almost 100 people signed up for this event, which is awesome. Um, so hopefully we get a few more, we get over 100 people. I think that would make it pretty spectacular. Uh, all the event registration details, etc. 96 is the current number of players are all right here, including how to register. You basically just send a quick email to uh, Jared, either this league's one or PM through the forums, and get yourself added to the event. Uh, we're up to 96 people now, huh? Starts April 1st, the event. It'll run uh, through May 10th, so you'll have six weeks or so to manage to play your 10 games, and then we'll cut it down to the top uh, eight, I believe. So lots of familiar names on here, certainly some unfamiliar names as well, so that'll be good. Get a good variety of players from all over the world, all different eras, all different play skills, and play uh, familiarity and play styles, skills and styles. That's what I was going for there. Uh, yes, yeah, plenty of, a lot of names here I don't recognize, and certainly some ones that we do. Hayes, oh, Hayes just signing up, add himself to list. Joe Olson there. Your defending world champion. How can you forget that man? Bastion going to make a run at uh, another championship. Your design advocate. Who I don't know uh, if he really played back then. A lot of these people, that's true. Like a lot of people that are good now and things you don't know. You know how? I mean, there's a list I think somewhere that Jared did for a marketing thing. Uh, where you can check out and you can see people's playing eras and whatnot to see where some of these guys who, who have had uh, a lot of success in the game, you know, where they got their start and what years they were active, um, you know, and who are relatively newer players who may not have had a lot of experience playing in this type of format. Uh, I will say I know Hayes loves this format. Um, for a number of years... Hayes would travel to just be our TD for a number of events. He really wasn't interested in playing open competitively anymore. Just didn't really care so much uh, about where the the state of the environment and things like that and the meta was at. Um, but Hayes would come and he would TD the event because he didn't want to play in it. And he would bring with him, he had two decks that were Premier to Death Star 2. So he would bring them with him. They were constructed decks. And if he was bored or in fun game or you know, late at night and, you know, you had to buy or something like that, you play a game with Hayes or it was late at night and, you know, you get, don't feel like going to bed, you play a game against Hayes just for hoo-hahs and uh, you would use his Premier Death Star 2 decks. So, of course, it gave him the huge advantage because he knew every card in both decks, but uh, he'd let you look through them before you, before you sat down to play them, so at least you had an idea of what you were playing with and what you were going to be playing against. Um, and uh, the last time we did one of these major events... Uh, he made the final four, I believe. So, and there, of course, is the 2000 world champion, Matt Sokol, playing in this event as well. So, uh, plenty of other things. Lots of leagues are kicking off here. We'll go through the my league here. Event number two coming up is this Wado's Objective alternate format. So I want to see these format rules, if we have them for this Wado's... Nope, we don't have the format rules. All right, I've, I've heard they're on the forums. So we're going to go check that out. We're going to find out just what exactly Watto's Cube Objective. 
There you go, Watto's Cube Info. All right, so this was created back at the end of the year. They did a cube, about 700 cards, nine card packs, the 10 card packs, and there's 15 objectives per side. So dark side, everybody gets these same 10 cards. A couple of systems, locations, ground locations, and prepared defenses. And then your random draft packs could include any of these cards. Quite a bit of uh, powerhouse stuff here. So lots of good cards in here. A few, uh, you know, plenty of mains and things like that. But there's the chances of getting duplicates of a lot of things are pretty small or non-existent because it's cube, right? So there's just one-offs of these. Yeah, that's in your draft pool. Uh, there's a couple of duplicates of weapons and things and interrupts. So you could get multiple copies that way. Okay. And then light side. It's a lot of the same stuff. Where does it say what the objectives are? Ah, that's down below. So we got a change log. They added a bunch of newer cards recently and got rid of a bunch of this other stuff. Okay. Expansion is in the next post. That's what I wanted to know. All right. So here's all the different objectives. That are all available. So... As I understand it, you get an objective. So I've got a pack here. I've got three packs. I'll get an objective. I'll get three objectives, one in each pack. And the starting cards that require you to go with it. So if I bring them before me, I get the throne room. I get the two effects to go with it. And then I also get a couple of cards that the designers have determined are necessary to make the deck successful. So they give you a copy of the Emperor. Uh, they give you Vader's castle here and uh, Emperor's power and a uh, copy of Vader, of course, to make the deck work. Um, same thing with some of these other objectives like uh, Coruscant CRV or Hoth CRV or Hunt Down. You know, you're getting the objective plus the Vader's castle and I am your father and all that kind of stuff. Um, for a while, one of the packs did have defensive shields in it, but they I believe that was a change they just took out. So they added a few new objectives. They removed a few of these and made a few changes to this. So this is maybe a... Uh, but like the Yavin 4 throne room, throne room pack here to see if it still says it. Yeah, so the Throne Room Pack included defensive shields with Jabba's prize. I believe if we go further into the change log here, we're going to find out that that's no longer the case. Yeah, so this was his, uh, Adam just made a couple changes this week. He flipped around based on the objectives in the errata. Uh, he made a few changes to which cards, you know, certain cards were blanked. We had to update them and change that stuff around. Um, and now uh, the Throne Room pack, he did take out the Defensive Shields. Same thing with the Coruscant CRV pack. He did take out Knowledge and Defense and the Defensive Shields. They do get the Grabber cards as just an effect to play, um, but it was kind of lopsided to give like uh, one deck type. You know, you've got a 1 in 15 chance or 3 out of 15 chance. Well, you got a 1 in 15 pull. You just get to do it three times. To, uh, to get the throne room pack, even if you don't want to play throne room, to get the starting interrupt with the uh, defensive shields in it um, while you're playing against a person who doesn't have defensive shields. And any of you who have ever played uh, an open game on Jemp, when your opponent just starts a location or something, and you're playing an open deck with defensive shields and whatnot, and they don't have any of that stuff, uh, it's usually a pretty one-sided game 
and, and that tends to end fairly quickly. So So okay, so that's kind of how that all works. Your leagues are starting up soon in lots of different areas. We've got the Colorado League up and going, Corellia, SoCal. All these different leagues are starting their first events. So maybe your league will be doing some type of sealed event too. And that's where you can find all the rules for it and figure out uh, how that's going to play out. And of course, we've got signups for the MPC still going on as well. I forgot to highlight that. Uh, you've got uh, about three weeks left to sign up for the match play championship. We've got 32 spots filled so far. All the details are here. Registration goes until midnight on April 11th. So 11 and 9, 20 days. So you've got uh, yeah, just under three weeks to still sign up for that. Uh, those games will all be played uh, April 24th and 25th. The bracket will be announced as part of Hollow Theater on the 14th. Uh, thanks to Bill again for spearheading this and really uh, taking control of the project and getting this event up and going this year. Uh, but make sure to sign up for that. It's a great event. You don't want to miss out on it. Uh, it's always better to play it live, but unfortunately we're still in uh, restricted access, shall we say. Uh, restricted group sizes. Uh, hopefully those regulations will start going away and uh, then we can get back to playing some live Star Wars cards. It's going to be very interesting to see people who, you know, you've only been playing online for like the last year and a half, two years, um, how rusty some of us are at playing live games, you know, with cards. Uh, how many of us remember what all of our cards do or, you know, uh, without Jemp enforcing certain rules, like paying three to drain when battle plan's on the table, uh, how many people will play that wrong in some interaction? Whether they uh, pay to drain when it's not on the table, because they're just used to doing that, um, yeah, or forget it's on the table and drain without paying for it, that kind of stuff. So, uh, should be interesting once we get back to some live games, but... For now, we're going to keep playing on Jemp because it's fun and we can do that and we love Star Wars and we want to keep playing Star Wars. All right. While we're waiting for episode one sealed, I can't imagine that's a very good format, just personally. Maybe it is. I don't know exactly what's all in that, but... Uh, You know, it seems like there's a lot of abusive mechanics and being in a limited environment like that. So let's go take a look at this Coruscant. So I'm changing to my league. Now I can go to my packs and boxes and see what we've got here. Did I get duplicates? Oh, I only get two objective packs. So I'm going to get my choice between two light side objectives. So spoiler alert, if you're playing against me, here's my light side objective. I've got Yavin 4 base operations. And I get uh, a couple of key cards to go with it and some systems in my pack. I'm not going to open the other one. I'll keep that a mystery. I could be playing Yavin 4 ops or something else. I'll open the dark side one, though. One of the dark side ones. All right, so I got the Coruscant CRV pack. So this would have had the knowledge and defense and the defensive shields. But instead, I'm going to get the grabber and then the battle order first strike effect. So and then uh, so you get the Coruscant, you get the combat readiness, you'll start the palace. Use the palace to pull these other locations. I got an Aura Sing. I got to crush the rebellion. Okay, I'm sure I can try and build something out of that. Um, and then randomly in these little draft packs here, you just get some random good cards that are out of that pool. Adjudicator, Projective Telepathy, Aphra, Lady Proxima. Okay, some decent stuff. Sith Fury. And we'll open a light side pack, see what we got. We got a blue 11, a Cassian. That's an Akbar. Oh, I got Moss Eisley. I can do a Cantina Shovel. So... 
Uh, plenty of good cards to build decks out of, so it's it's sealed constructed. You know, you're playing with the limited card pool, you're playing with smaller decks, but you're not just opening random garbage and trying to build the deck out of a Jawa, a Taos, and a, you know, a random, you know, Tatooine utility belt. Um, you're trying to build, it's a semi-constructed deck, you're trying to build it out of a pool of playable cards, so... Yeah, I think I can make it work. I'm sure I can make some interesting decks. I'm, uh, you know, Coruscant CRV has always been an interesting platform. Um, you know, Tatooine CRV for the same reason. Uh, being able to just go get the Jabba's Palace sites and set all that up uh, is always pretty interesting. It's always a deck I always keep meaning to, to look at and try and bring back, but I just never get around to. Um, I think the problem is, is that there's a number of light side decks that start the Tatooine system, so your system ends up getting converted. Uh, by Watcher Step, by Diplo. But, yeah, I mean, if you could just start that, pull Java's Palace, pull all the Java's Palace sites uh, over the next couple turns. There's all your activation. You got plenty of interior battlegrounds. Set up occupation, right? Seems like a good way to go. Never really works out that way, though. Okay, so this should be fun. Good way to get some stuff going and and then obviously I'll, once I finish opening the rest of these packs, uh, find something to put together. But, yeah, let's do one more of each. Yeah, there's an EPP OB. All right, sorry about the mess. Nice. Melos who draws, a rebel leadership. Cheer it could actually be good. I mean, there's certainly plenty of ability characters who draw by themselves, but when you only have a 45-card deck that you're working with, I think it's 45 cards you build with, um... You know, Chirrut's ability to once per game you can recirculate is actually really huge. Deploy, you know, activate all your force. Your opponent doesn't think you're battling them, so they don't really care. You drop, you deploy two or three guys in front of them, and then you drop Chirrut, and they're like, crap, I should have barriered the EPP Obi, because I didn't think you were going to battle. And then Chirrut's like, I had to all once per game recycle all that, and now I'll battle and swing and hit people and draw, you know, some battle destiny. They're like, I totally would have played this turn differently if I had a thought we were going to be able to battle. And it's like, yeah, I know. That's kind of what cheer it's supposed to do. So uh, that's actually a pretty good pull, in my opinion, in uh, this smaller deck format. All right, what do we got? That's just a regular Aura Sing. So now I got, oh, evil is everywhere. This could be good. On episode one, Dark Jedi are lost. You can get a mobile hallway or a lightsaber. I don't know. We'll see what else I open up. Maybe I could set up some type of course on CRV with like episode one guys, you know, have Grievous and Dooku and uh, maybe some type of version of Maul because that Maul deploys cheaper to Coruscant anyway. Maybe I just stumbled onto a new deck idea. Hmm. Maybe you could play Coruscant CRV with Evil is Everywhere. That's one of your three effects, and then just have, you know, Maul Young Apprentice, who is freaking ridiculously good um, with his double-bladed lightsaber, just, you know, kind of running around killing people all over a core or something. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a deck there. Uh, Bane Malar, who finally works properly. Thank you for getting him coded. His uh, mind scan ability was the hardest, one of the hardest cards to ever code uh, that they've done so far, so... Uh, finally getting that working right. Or at least we think it's working right. And then, of course, in typical Sealed Duck fashion, you just get a generic Imperial Class Star Destroyer. Yay! Because any of us who have ever played Sealed Deck with Premier cards, you get really excited about this, and you're like, yeah, it's power 8. Never going to draw Battle Destiny, because that's all you can afford to put out is just the ship that turn. Uh, but hey... Well, hey, Mr. Grimms, thank you for stopping by, and I'm glad to hear that you still have some cards somewhere. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a play group in your driving distance area who uh, would love to host you at an event. They can certainly always borrow cards and borrow decks from people as well. Uh, but we, uh, we also play online for free on this lovely website, 
jump.starwarsccg.org. Sign up for free. It's all web-based, so uh, you can play on laptops, desktop computer, phones, tablets. It's a little harder on the, on the smaller screens to click on some of the individual cards, but uh, I've seen it done. So thanks for stopping by. Trying to figure out the best way to learn the game again. Well, ah, best way to learn, watch. See this little button over here, watch game. That's what we're going to do in just a second here. Um, for just learning the general mechanics, sometimes sealed is good for that too. Sometimes just playing uh, a limited format as opposed to uh, an open deck where you've got all kinds of things going on. Uh, you can also watch any of the videos in my video series. There's 96 of them on YouTube right now. Um, where I kind of give lots of different explanations on matchups and gameplay and, uh, you know, you kind of get a feel for some of the mechanics or you can just watch some of the games that, uh, you know, have happened and just sort of see the mechanics and the steps they're taking. All right, so these guys are still waiting to play. So we're going to hop into a game here. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's jump into this. Uh, I guess we'll see what we got going on here in, in this episode one sealed game. So let's see what we got. All right, so this guy started with Senate. This person started with the, the Tatooine Slave Quarters. So for those of you new to the GEMP platform, uh, up here is your hand size. This is the number of cards out of play. This is how much force each player activates each turn from counting all of their icons on their locations. Uh, this little number down here, this is their current power at that location. Um, so it does all the math for you. It helps you make informed decisions when you're determining whether or not to battle. Now certain characters and things like that get bonuses during battle. Certain cards may get like, hey, plus two during in battle with another guy. Um, those are not reflected because the game state is not currently during a battle. Um, so I've seen people burned by that in the past. Something to always point out. Like if you're playing against Echo Base Operations, which says your total power is plus three in battles at systems. Um, you know, they're like, oh, you're power six. And then they battle you and they're like, oh, no, you're power nine now. That's not what I thought that was going to be. And then they take some damage. All right, but Ace Mace here plays an Odin Nesler combo during his move phase, relocates a bunch of his characters to the slave quarters. So he brought Queen Amidala. Looks like she's armed with a Naboo blaster rifle, along with these Gungan warriors who also have a Naboo blaster rifle. They went to this site, and then Obi moved away to Tatooine Moss Espa here. It cost him plus... See, this guy's just power plus three while with another droid, so that's always. So he's currently showing up power five. Another thing, too, if you sh hold down shift and you click on the card, you get all kinds of useful information. You can see the game text larger. You can get some information about, hey, this guy's power five. Why? Because his game text is giving him the bump. Um, you know, other little things like that. Uh, opponent's characters require plus one force to move from same site using their land speed. So that's why if you look at the, the activity log back here, it said he used two force to move Obi-Wan instead of the normal one force to move because uh, this droid made him cost more. So we got four strain for two at the Tatooine system. The blockade flagship is parked here with Sil Unch. Adds three to power. While aboard a battleship, he makes an immune to less than four, and he draws a destiny if unable to otherwise. So you can see this battleship is immune to attrition less than four. And our little footnote here tells us it's that way because of Sil Unch. It's power nine. It's printed at power six, but it gets plus three from Sil being a pilot. And these are the guys who are piloting it. If it held passengers, they would be listed separately 
in a separate tab down below as well. So both players are about 20 life force left. Curious to see. He's just going to move away some people. Okay. So Watto here has land speed 2 because of his little flappy wings. So he's going to move all the way over to this other site with Orn Frita. So now he's got 4 ability at this site. So he can draw Battle Destiny. And rather than just have these two other droids stuck here or moving in front of Obi where they're likely to get beat up, uh, because the Slave Quarters is an exterior site, he can shuttle them up directly to the ship. And then Idea Track's going to draw a couple cards to refill his hand. Game text here on Moss Espa says, During your control phase may move your characters from slave quarters to here. So during his control phase, he moved the queen over. He's going to leave the Gungan general behind by himself. And then he will force drain for one. Gungan Warrior will follow up. Okay. Moving this to its own individual application. Yeah, it's been thought about, but, uh, you know, that's obviously a, a lot more extensive programming. Um, and then, you know, you have to have the app installed on multiple devices and things like that, and it has to be available in different formats, um, whereas keeping it web-based kind of keeps all that simple, because anywhere you can open a web browser, you can play the game, so uh, you don't have to, you know, if you have an Android phone, or, an, you know, then we need the iPhone version, then we need the iPad version, you know, or whatever, that might just make it a lot more complicated and time-consuming for the programmers. I don't know if those guys even have those skills to create things like that, um, but the you know the guy who originally designed this a couple years ago uh, kept it web-based to keep it pretty straightforward and and to make it as uh, universally uh, accessible as possible. Kiadi Mundi for eight force deploys plus three if not to Jedi Council Chamber. Ouch. And he's kind of chilling aboard this EOP here. And these guys are all. Just kind of piled up here. He's going to draw a bunch of cards to refill his hand. Apparently Ace Mace thought that he could move the guys again. Uh, but no, uh, it's a regular move using the text, kind of just like the Cantina Shuffle. Of course, two types of movement in the Star Wars universe. There's unlimited moves, which you can do as many times as you want. That includes things like uh, getting on and getting off a vehicle. Um, you know, 
know, ship docking between two ships are unlimited moves. That kind of stuff to move people around from different starships in space. Uh, but, you know, using land speed on the ground or docking bay transit or shuttling guys from a site up to a ship in orbit or vice versa. Um, those are regular moves and those are limited to one per turn. So idea tracks got drain this drain two at the system plus this drain of one over here. Ooh. Uh, Ace Mace had a drain of one and he just gave himself a drain of two by putting Kiati Mundi down. But uh, idea track had a pretty large hand and he has found Lord Maul who deploys minus two to Naboo. This guy does stuff with lightsaber combat, which we don't have going on. But Maul does have his lightsaber. Oh, there's a second Maul. But that's going to miss. He's going to miss swinging with the lightsaber at Kiati Mundi. While at a battleground, if opponent just initiated battle at same or adjacent site, they must lose top card of reserve deck. So that's why he lost the top card. Then he swung and missed. Now he'll draw a battle destiny. He has a three. Uh, he is only immune to attrition when he's at the Jedi Council Chamber, so not going to work for Kiati Mundi here. Light side also draws a three, but Maul is immune to less than five or less than six when he's armed with the lightsaber. You can see up here is immunity to attrition, less than six. He will lose the EOP, which will cover that three. Unfortunate luck that he drew just the three and not, uh, you know, anything a little higher. I doubt Kiati Mundi's going to want to stick around there. and But hey, you never know. Uh, Ace Mace picked up a few cards last turn. Maybe he found a lightsaber that he can swing at Maul with or an extra character or two that he can come battle with. Maybe there's a Qui-Gon in there who will come beat up Lord Maul. Yes, we do have a new user interface as well. That's also pretty cool. Uh, still in the beta testing version. Most of it works pretty well. Um, I still, um, I'm always preferential to the original version. Um, I think there's a little bit of a slight little lag with the new version sometimes with some of the actions because it has some graphics and some animation and stuff to it um, that I feel just kind of slows the process down a little bit. Plus, I'm just used to this one because I've been using it for a few years now. So I'm sure eventually we'll all migrate over to the new interface, but uh, it's something that's just been worked on the last, it's been worked on for a while, but it's just been released, you know, kind of in the last few weeks, so. So Ace Mace strains for one. Idea Track pitches a battle droid. Checks his destiny. He, sh ooh, he's going to get Pod Racer collisioned. but there was nothing there. Because I'm saying the Destiny card should be the card he drew for Battle Destiny last turn, which should be the three. All right, Ace has got, got a couple of ships that he's going to deploy now to stop taking this drain at two in space. So we've got a Republic cruiser. Well, it's same system as opponent's battleship. Their battle destiny draws are each minus one. 
This is a battleship, so his battle destiny draws will each be minus one. Then we've got this Naboo defense fighter, which when he adds the pilot, suspends the permanent pilot. And what does this particular pilot guy do? Just deployed aboard an N1 starfighter, you may activate a force. So he triggers his text, activates this last card, which he just checked, which should be that pilot character. Uh, adds two to the power. And we get this, oops, Lieutenant Kirsch. Kirsch. He also adds two to power. While piloting Bravo 4, which he's not, so none of this game text will apply. But he's got, uh, you know, four ability plus some extra forfeit. So he can get a Battle Destiny in space. Uh, he doesn't have any cards left to draw this turn, but... And he is going to deploy an extra guy as well. And then move some people over. So Ace realizing he's behind in this game. Uh, it's kind of going to just have to block some some drains. See if he can't sort of trap his opponent a little bit. He's going to take all the Gungans and move them over. While with another Gungan, draws a Battle Destiny if unable to otherwise. Okay, so he'll get a Battle Destiny there. He's got Power 6. Each of these guys forfeits for 3. We've seen so far Destiny in this deck. So yeah, it's kind of 3 seems about average. And he's got a Force to shoot somebody with this gun. He did save one. So we'll see how this all plays out. Well, there you go, Mr. Grimms. Welcome to Star Wars CCG 2021. Hey, we got a senator hitting the table, and he's going to the Senate. There's a second senator. Not quite enough to flip your objective, though. But uh, he will get to trigger some of these wonderful abilities these guys have. While he's in a majority, he can add one to attrition for himself and this guy here, who also has uh, the ambition agenda. And this guy just prevents opponent from drawing more than one battle destiny. Okay. So Maul's going to battle. He has to top deck a card. He loses Take Them Away, which is a nice Destiny 4 card. And now he'll swing at some of these other guys. He's going to go for the lower ability guy, just to try and hit somebody. Ooh. There's a good five. I have to try and remember where that is. So the Corporal's hit, and he's forfeit zero now. Will not be able to cover any battle damage or attrition. And now he draws the Pod Racer Collision, which he tracked by playing it last turn. Even though his opponent didn't have anything that uh, he could make lost when he verified the reserve deck, it was a character. Um, it still gave him the opportunity to play the card, to get it out of his hand, to put the five back into his deck, where he could then activate to it and draw it for Battle Destiny. His opponent draws a Famba, which is also a 5. Now, Maul's immune to less than 6, um, so he wouldn't have to lose Maul, but he would have had to lose a Force for battle damage, so he's going to play a copy of Take Them Away, which subtracts 1 from a just drawn battle destiny. So he subtracts it down to a 4. They end up tying 12 to 12. Dark Side loses nothing. Light Side, this guy's forfeit 0, and Kiadi Mundi's going to have to die. And now Maul's going to move over to the throne room with that last force. 
So now he's got a bigger drain possible possibility of draining for three here as opposed to just two here at the courtyard. No interest in initiating battles at either of these locations because he's just going to end up losing key characters. Uh, you know, the droids are just kind of being forfeit fodder up here in space. They're not really doing a whole lot, but they are just sort of, uh, you know, going to be there to absorb some battle damage if and when battles do take place up here. You know, Dark Side's winning the game right now. They've got 18 total cards left. Uh, they've got a, a bigger drain situated here. Light side's down to 13 plus one in hand, 14. And they are only doing one damage here. So dark side doesn't need to really uh, press the action here. They're ahead and they've got bigger damage potential. So they might as well just take advantage of it and enjoy it. Light side is going to initiate battle in space. They draw four. Dark side draws a three, which gets subtracted by one to be a two, which is good because this uh, Nabu pilot guy, will f well, he's forfeit four. Probably both forfeit four then. Yep. But light side has a dark side has four attrition, and these battle droids, I believe, only forfeit for three each. So unfortunately, they are going to have to lose them both. Um, Sill here at least gives him the ability to draw destiny and gives the ship some immunity. So that's not really the guy you'd want to lose. And then when light side's going to battle over here on the ground, and they're going to try and use this gun here and shoot Watto. Now, I believe this is Watto's junkyard, isn't it? Yeah, while Watto here, you may not draw Battle Destiny. Um, but draws, if unable to otherwise, kind of supersedes that text. It's one of those weird little mechanics. And there's a big five. So the Naboo Battle Rifle here just hits people. doesn't affect their forfeit in any way. So Watto's going to keep his forfeit of four. And Orn also has forfeit four. So those guys are going to cover eight battle damage, which is exactly what they're looking at right now. Um, and then dark side here will get to draw their destiny and make something lost as well. Yeah. I was wondering why dark side was wondering if they hadn't drawn their destiny yet, if they were trying to figure out how light side is able to get their draw. That's because the Gungans draw if unable to otherwise. And Darkseid will draw that four. Uh, four is also a pretty good number because I think these guys are all four fit three, aren't they? And then he'll add two to the attrition with his senators. So he'll make the attrition six. Uh, that'll get rid of two things here. So it'll basically get rid of the Eopi and one of the Gungans. That'll cover the six attrition. Dark side will lose everything on their side of the board. So light side will have both of these two sites. And they're making some progress here in the system. Um, but they're about to get drained for three and one over here. Now, this is once per turn. You can add one. So he had to choose whether or not to use it in the first battle or not uh, to get rid of something extra in space. And that would have been a consideration as well. Uh, so he only drew he drew a three the first time uh, in this battle in space, I believe. Let's go back and check.
it was a two. So if you had added two to the attrition, it only would have been because it was minus one. I forgot about that from the, the cruiser. Um, so it, it was a two for destiny. If you had added two to the attrition, it would have made it a four. And either pilot still covered four. So it did, either way, he was losing the same guy. So it didn't make sense to use the ability, the once per turn, to add the two because it was going to result in the same thing, one character being lost. By saving it, when they battled again, he was able to use it this time around and make sure he got rid of something extra. I mean, it happened to work out the same way. He still got rid of just two things, but uh, at least he had the potential or the possibility of being able to get rid of something else. Lots of little decisions in, in Star Wars. When to use once per game abilities, once per turn abilities, once per battle abilities. So, Dark Side will initiate four strains of one and three. That's going to whittle Ace down a few more cards. They're still discussing in the chat that uh, <laughs> draws of unable to otherwise versus may not draw battle destiny here. And basically, uh, if unable to otherwise is kind of the trump card there, right? Something says you can't do something, and this thing says, well, if you're unable to, you get to do it anyway. So there's the big drain at the throne room. There goes the queen's ship. There goes Officer Dolfe and the Electropole. Oh, when Darkseid had another ship, they've got the Trade Federation battleship here. This thing only has permanent pilot of ability one. And he's added Yade Marak as a pilot. So this guy also adds two to power. So now he's going to initiate battle. Now he's got a whopping 17 to 7. He's going to draw that. All right, so it's that 2 again. And there's the 5 for dark side. Now he loaded everybody up on the one ship, knowing his opponent had that 5 on top. He's going to have to lose the big battleship. Um... But his opponent is down by seven, so he's got seven battle damage to deal with here, uh, which may be the fighter. And this guy would cover the seven. But then you're kind of just leaving this cruiser here by itself. And none of these guys are pilots. So unless that one card in his hand is a pilot, uh, he's going to end up having to move away. That's what it would probably come down to. Doesn't leave Ace in a very good spot because if he's just constantly running away from the battleship, then every time he moves, his opponent drains and then follows him. Not ideal. Especially when you're already behind.
So I think Ace, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Ace has just indicated that the card in his hand is Odin Nessler because he was asking about a, uh, a question about how it works if he has no cards in reserve deck. So I'm guessing he's going to four strain here for three on the ground. <coughs> and then he's, we're likely to see him use the Odin Nessler and move maybe Obi and, and Amidala over to the throne room to block this drain by a mall. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, there's the Odin Nestler. He does draw the Famba again, so it is going to cost him five. Oh, wow. He doesn't move to block the drain. Instead, he moves to get himself a, a, a bigger drain. But uh, unfortunately, he's still behind in the damage race. So that's not going to... It's going to... I mean, obviously it helps doing more damage, but it's not going to work for him. And the cruiser will just run away. So now he's looking at drains of 1, 3, and 2. He's going to lose 6 cards. He only has 10 left. Um, meanwhile, he's going to do a drain of two and a drain of two. He'll spread these guys out, I guess. You know, oh, he's going to move Amidala over to block. Okay. Oh, it's because Odin says you have to go to an exterior site. I f yeah. At one exterior site to another exterior site. So he had to do it that way. Okay. Uh, I haven't used Odin in quite some time. I forgot they did it this way because Neighborn was too strong going wherever you wanted. So you can only go from exterior to exterior. So we had to use that movement to get them to here and then walk them into the throne room. Okay. Is there a part on site that goes over rules? Um, no. Um, we have a couple guys. There's one or two tutorial videos. that we have. I don't know if they're still up here in the tutorial section. No, it looks like it's just sealed now. Um, it'll still give you some of the basics maybe about how to build your deck and things like that in the f tutorial section. Um, and then we do have a couple guys who are working on some new videos uh, about basic gameplay and stuff, but otherwise, no. That's one of our projects. Uh, for this year is to really make sure to get some better uh, tutorials and, and game aids for people who haven't played in 20 years or never played and just, you know, kind of stumbled across the Twitch stream or the YouTube videos. Because uh, all of our uh, live streaming on Twitch does get backed up and moved over to YouTube. And some of our individual uh, streamers, like myself, have our own YouTube channels where we uh, post our videos directly as well. Oh, and this is going to be the end of the game because here come two battle droids to beat up on that lone Gungan. He sp spread them out looking for a drain of one to get that extra one ping damage in. Uh, his opponent has a couple cards left and that'll pretty much end the game. He's got five battle damage to take, and he's got seven cards left. So he'll peel five cards. And his opponent can basically move his guys to block the other drains. He could just move everybody away. Oh. Yeah, he'll move the flagship over there. And that's pretty much going to wrap this game up. All right. Well, that was an interesting little thing to uh, to watch and spectate for a little bit and uh, give some returning players uh, just a little glimpse at the format and the decks and uh, the mechanics and the you know how everything works and the interactions. 
Um, but yeah, so obviously keep, uh, you got 10 days to play your OCS qualifier games if you're involved in that tournament. It's part of our major event series. Uh, current leaderboard standings. Paul Meyer still sitting at the top at 11 and 1. Uh, Bastion did finish up his games at 10 and 2. Uh, but he qualified last month, so this spot would get skipped. So whoever finishes in third could still qualify. Kyle's got a nice little lead on win percentage over Gavin and Matt. Uh, but there's still a handful of people left to get who have some games left to play. Uh, I got no reply. David down here, 8-1. and one. Uh, Could make a run at things. Uh, Joe, 6-2. and two. If he could win his remaining four games with a higher good enough win percentage, he could move into third and, and pass Kyle. Uh, Justin's down here at 6-1. and one. Still have a couple games left to play. And then uh, we've got a couple 4 and ones Hey, look, there's me. Uh, and then a bunch of guys who really haven't uh, started playing too many other games yet. So they're going to have to do some cramming these last few days. Uh, just got just a little over a week left to get your 12 games in to see if you finish in the top two to qualify for the playoffs. Uh, no OCS in April because of the two big events, the Premier Death Star 2 format. Registration for that ends in a week. And the uh, Match Play Championship event, which is our NCAA bracket style tournament. Of course, March Madness going on right now, although it's a little weird with some of the teams that had to sit out because of COVID positive test cases. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of skewed a little bit. But uh, it's better than having no tournament like they did last year, right? So um, I'm going to wrap up the show tonight. Thank you guys all very, very much for stopping by. And uh, how does a new player get cards or decks? Well, there's a bunch of pre-constructed decks uh, that are already programmed in that everybody starts with um, from different eras and different formats. Um, but cards themselves, you have free access to the whole card pool. Um, to build stuff with. Well, 98% uh, of the cards in the game have been coded into Jemp. The, s the cards that are missing are Decipher cards. Uh, there's also something called Virtual cards, which is what we've been doing to continue the game for the last 20 years. Uh, we have a design team. They design cards. They make their own sets. Uh, the cards go over existing cards, so we're just changing the game text for the most part although there are some full template ones that completely are new characters and new personas and things. Um, so there are Episode 7 cards, there's stuff from Rogue One, stuff from the prequel movies, all that kind of good stuff has been added. Um, but yeah, you can, if you just go down here, sample decks, there's a whole bunch of samples. Premier to Death Star 2, pre-constructed decks here, uh, some classic format decks, Premier to A New Hope style decks, Got some, yeah, Premier to Death Star 2 formats. So, all that stuff is right there. And then you can go to the deck builder and build your own deck if you want. Because cards, all, and there's the entire card pool. It's all at your discretion. And then you can use the different filters and drop downs, whatever format you're playing. Uh, whatever format you pick, your if you go down here, it will tell you if it's your deck is legal for that format. Does not contain the number of cards required, which is 60. Um, this is where your defensive shields go if you're playing with those, or your hidden base marker, which is no longer part of your deck. And then you can filter this and narrow it down. So I'm building a light side deck. I can just sort it and take all the dark side cards out. If I'm playing in a particular format, like Premier to Death Star 2, that'll filter it down even more, so now I'm only playing with cards that are legal in that format. You get the idea. But, uh... <laughs> V-cards are new and scary. Everybody feels that way at first, until you start using them. And, uh, just like everything, you know, in life. 
Uh, there's lots of scary things out there, but once you start doing something, uh, you know, it's really not quite as bad usually as you thought it was. So, uh, best of luck to you guys. Thank you guys for stopping by and checking out the show. Uh, I'm usually on every Monday night around this time, but uh, I'm going to wrap up tonight's show, see if I can't jump in one of these games myself, have a little fun. And uh, we'll be back next week with episode number 98.